Namaste Star Family, welcome to this picker card in honor of Mars transiting Leo. You can choose your pile according to your preference or your zodiac sign. I would suggest your Mars placement, but again, you can use your intuition as well. Those messages are going to be from your Kundalini life force, okay? So healing messages from your creative self, from your creative juices and flow. So the energy that flows through your uh, vertebrae, through your chakra line. So let's first pick those piles. All right, let's get those piles ready. And because I am traveling at this time, I do not have the zodiac sign of stones that I usually use, but I will use the tarot cards associated to those zodiac placements. So some of you, that's a great way also to learn what tarot cards go with each zodiac sign. Okay. All right, so three piles. Before we turn them over, let's look at those zodiac signs connected to those cards. Okay, pile one. Okay. So one, two, three. Okay. There we go. All right. So what do we have? Let's look at pile number one. We have Archaea Clarity. Ooh, I love this. Rest, reflect, and recharge. Pile number one. We look at the zodiac sign after. Pile number two, we have Guardian Angel. Ask for support. What a beautiful card here. Feels like a you know, higher self energy that's trying to be embodied here. And pile number three, we have oh, Archaea Joy. Prioritize play and pleasure with the number 33, like the 33 vertebrae. Ooh, this is, this is gorgeous. I love, love, love those cards. Okay, pile number one, we have Aquarius with the star card. I don't know if I'll have space for all of this, but Let's see. We have the moon with Pisces. We have the strength with Leo. Okay, oops. All right. And we have Aries with the Emperor. Okay. So that's going to be pile number one. Again, Aquarius, Pisces, Leo, and Aries. Pile number two. We have the death card, Scorpio. Then we have Cancer with the Chariot. Then we have Libra with the Justice card. And then we have Sagittarius with the Temperance. I'm sure some of you must appreciate this little twist <laughs> with the Zodiac archetype. Okay. That gives you an insight when you pull tarot cards, you are actually activating, uh, you know, the zodiac. You're actually activating your star placement. There's a lot of guidance that I see when people are starting uh, to play with tarot cards. And they're like, why did I pull this? And, and often it's in their chart. <laughs> then we have here for pile number three, Taurus with the Hierophant. We have Capricorn with the Devil card. And we have Gemini with the Lover's card. And we have Virgo with the Hermit card. Okay, wonderful. One, two, and three. Let's get those Kundalini energy messages. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your messages. Those are Kundalini healing messages. If you chose according to your zodiac placement, it can be your sun placement, but I strongly suggest your Mars placement because this is in honor of Mars transiting Leo. We have here the moon card, which is Pisces, the star card, which is Aquarius, the emperor card, which is Aries, and the strength card, which is Leo. So those are the zodiac signs. We're going to put them aside and your beautiful card is with Archaea Clarity. This speaks about rest, reflection, and recharging your energy. I am not surprised, um, pile number one, as far as the recharge. 
um, <laughs> because Mars is actually in the tarot, the tower card. And I let me see which tarot card here we have from the tower. Look at this. It always has this lightning effect, okay? And I always see how this creates an up-leveling, an upgrade of your model of operation, your nervous system, how you go about things. So there is here an invitation for you, pile number one, from your kundalini, so your energy, your life force that allows you to connect to the divine and be a creator, you know, mindful and yet powerful creator of your own reality. There's something that needs to be recharged, okay, that needs the space for it to rest, to reflect and understand so you can recharge and go about your life in greater ways through this transit. The transit in November 3rd to January 6, 2025. So it's pretty long as far as Mars transit. But this invitation towards the end of 2024 is really helping you uh, to start 2025 under the highest level of your I call it, you know, it's like if you were, <laughs> if we were computers or phones, it's your latest upgrade. It's your up leveling. Okay. So let's get those healing messages for you. Okay. What do we have for pile number one, as far as healing messages for their Kundalini energy? Well, I feel that this card is here as well. Okay. We have have faith with the number 22. Interesting, because it's a number 21, 22. There's a progression. Have faith in the progression of your life. Have faith in the events that have manifested and how things are unfolding for you, pile number one. Now, I have put a little bit, <laughs> a little sticker here. Uh, this is Kundalini life force prana because there is some exposition of the physical body, which YouTube, you know, kind of censors. Um, this is all about your life force. This is about how you're expressing yourself. So there's, there's something here that we need. You definitely need to recharge your energy, recharge and recuperate, uh, how much you've probably provided some efforts in your life towards bettering your life, bettering yourself, having clarity about certain patterns, okay? And then you have, wow, self-love. So that was the first, you know, that was the first card, how it fell, okay? But I love this progression of numbers. What is this number I'm going to look? <laughs> I'll let you know. This is actually number four, okay? But it's you could almost have like 21, 22, 20, you know, and 24. There's a progression, okay? So I feel for you, pile number one, self-love has been something you've worked on and something that needs you to create the space for you to really understand that loving yourself is going to bring healing Healing is not bringing self-love. It's loving yourself that brings healing. That was actually one of the message uh, that was part of the Mercury transit in Sagittarius. Some of you, if that's something you want to review, um, the Mercury reading. Wow, I did not get a pen and pencil, you guys. Let me get that right now. <laughs> I'm back. I couldn't find a pen and paper, but I decided to write notes on my phone. Okay, so let's continue those messages as far as healing your kundalini and what you need to hear. Oh, wow, that's actually felt just this on the kundalini. Come to the edge. This is interesting. I feel that some of you, maybe there has been you know, a lot of effort, a lot of efforts to go beyond your comfort zone. Yeah. Let's deep dive with this. What does this coming to the edge? Yeah, you know what? I'll take it. 
we have go the distance. Yeah, I, I've been, yeah, I've, some of you, you've been doing great inner work. And this is a time where you're going to be asked to let your energy replenish itself. All that glitters. Treasure Island. And the peace. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get this a little bit. Oop, there. Okay. Because I feel I want to mention to you what I'm seeing here. So what I'm seeing here is a lot of your dedication, dedicated efforts to also shed the unloving, because those are almost like rose petals that look like little hearts, shed the unloving parts of yourself. Some of you, if you're interested on my Instagram account, I do have a free trial for 14 days uh, where I just shared on the subscription some journaling prompts for healing the five languages of love. I've done this exercise myself. I did it mentally at first, and I saw how I needed to put it down to paper. So I wrote those prompts, and it was such a deep healing. As far as understanding that, I was still under the subconscious influence of a lot of the love language that I had witnessed as a child, whether it was between my parents or the people in my immediate family, and how it kind of, um, even though I had my own language, there were some, you know, dissonance and discordance sometimes in the immediate reaction to certain love languages. It was super healing. So some of you, if you're interested, uh, go and check out my Instagram uh, account and check out the subscription option. Okay. Because yeah, I feel here with the, all that glitters and those masks that maybe some of you, you, you're able to see, you know, it's like the higher self. You're able to see now what truly matters to your heart with the treasure, what truly you personally value and what ultimately will bring you peace. So when you're watching this, you might with the half faith, I, you might have gone through a lot of shedding, maybe I'm hearing burning bridges, having to cut certain relationships, or the way you overly invested yourself in relationships. I don't know why I'm saying this, but I feel like this overly, uh, maybe for need of approval in the past. Um, and that shift in your mod of operation, okay, your iOS, if you want to call it that, like that, um, is really going to lead you to feel this type of peace. And this is going to help you, I feel, embrace a higher, newer version of yourself, okay? And I want to go into this new upgraded version that is coming after that, okay? So let's get those details here for the upgrade. There's a healing and it seems that the healing is in the process. Some of you, if you're watching this, again, the only remaining work that I feel could be around the five love languages. Some of you, if you've never looked into it, there's even a quiz. I'm going to post that Whoops, as well. Oh, we, okay. All right. That's, that's a lot of cards. We're not going to take that. <laughs> okay. But I'm just getting an insight that we might want to clear the space for the next level. Okay. All right. But let me write that quiz for you. Um, love language, love quiz. Okay. Up. And let's get this next layer of message for you, my dear. Pile number one. Okay. So once you have fully gave yourself the space for your own personal love language to bloom and not being influenced by the old subconscious programs inherited or just, you know, that you've learned through your personal experience, what can you expect? Okay, because it's like healing messages 
and I'm seeing that some of you maybe it was good to hear that you're in the right direction, that you're, you know, it's going to pay off. And in which way? Oh, look at this. Message in a bottle. Okay. A time for a nap. Oh, number 24 showed up. <laughs> It did, it did. A leg up. Okay, I feel this is here, actually. Mm -hmm. And, ooh, exchanging gifts. Okay. You know what's going on here? Pile number one. I really feel that with the support of this face, your kundalini is still shedding the last layers of love. So you can perceive yourself as the love that you truly are. But also exchange in your relationships, you know, exchanging gifts. That's actually a love language, which is receiving gifts. So some of you, maybe in particular, it's not going to be for everyone. There's something about gifting or gifts that could have a certain message for you, a certain uh, wound and pattern. I remember that for me, that was a deep awareness of how my father was very much in about gifting, but how my mom was uh, more focused on the material aspect of gifts and how it was received was almost like it, it was something she wanted, but that's not what she really needed. And um, there was just a lot of incomprehension and uh, lack of being relatable to each other uh, that I witnessed in the, my parents' dynamic as far as gifts. So, so that's something that I'm just, you know, sharing so you can have an idea of how maybe you can witness a difference in the gift, gifting. It's a love language, but I would strongly suggest you looking into all of them. But if you've been suffering from a lack of reciprocity, uh, in your relationships or misunderstanding. I feel that maybe understanding how you relate to exchanging gifts or that specific love language could be of the essence for you, pile number one. Okay, I didn't even remember that card was here. <laughs> There's definitely a message here. Okay, and when you're going to rest, you're going to receive some up leveling. Okay. Um, I did suggest for the ones that are doing the journaling prompts with me, the yin yang frequency. Okay. So that's something that I strongly suggest you listen to because that gives you some insights about your feminine and masculine patterns and help you with this new mod of operation. You're going to get a lot of this done through uh, you know, doing maybe the journaling, okay, messages, it's written usually, or it's texting, it's typed. And then here, you, then you can go and rest, whether it's for frequency or just going to bed. And the leg up is the divine. The divine is going to give you some insights about your love language. And I feel this is what's going to be your next level in your life force, in your creativity, you're going to be able to be seen, to be appreciated in greater ways because you're going to have so much more awareness about your own love language and how others also communicate their love language and how you can have uh, this greater space for love in your life. Some of you, if you are part of the YouTube membership, all levels have access to this. It's an, I'm going to recommend the nervous system uh, frequency. This is a great, like, uh, 15 minutes, 16 minutes frequency that I suggest and recommend for power naps, but also when you're doing energy work and it's, you know, it's, it can be heavy sometimes, you know, to process all this remembrance, just fall asleep to it and just like pff, get a whole upgrade. This is kind of like my, uh, upgrading, uh, frequency to process all of this through the nervous system. 
Okay, my dear pile number one, that's all I have for you. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. And please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your Kundalini healing messages. Your card is the guardian angel. Ask for support. It seems that there's an upgrade through your physical body, you know, of your kundalini. So you can start to express more of your divine higher self. Okay, if you chose according to your zodiac placement, which I strongly suggest you would look at your Mars natal placement. We have here the death card for Scorpio. The chariot is Cancer. Sagittarius is Temperance card and Libra is the Justice card. I'm going to put them aside. All right, and let's get those healing messages. Okay, all right, let's get the healing cards. Some of you, if you like those decks, I always list them in the video description. I'm also listing all the frequencies and readings that pop up or happen to pop up through uh, those messages and readings okay also in the description box okay so we have four cards okay for the healing what's going on with you pile number two we have ooh, the phoenix rising all about alchemy here the pride which is an ego death okay very interesting there's some ego death here going on alchemy of how you perceive yourself and then we have ooh, the dreams and sadness interesting okay you know right off the bat I feel that for you, pile number two, with this transit, there's a renewal of who you are. Maybe there was an ideal, idealization of a certain um, character or, or, you know, persona that you wanted to embody that needs actually to shift that needs shifting. It can create some sadness, but I feel it's more because you're grieving a part of yourself that you had certain attachments to, certain habits. Interestingly, with the number five, we currently collectively have the Chiron retrograde in Aries in the angle of the zodiac number five if you count zero to five degrees in aries it's number one five to ten it's number two so and so on and so forth this is the chiron wound so that's something i'm going to suggest for you is to look at your personal chiron placement and i do have a Chiron, a collective Chiron reading that I'm going to suggest. You remember how I kept on insisting, okay, for you, the description box, so Chiron reading, and I'm going to also link the frequency album for Chiron. You just can listen to your personal placement and you'll get some support, okay, some divine support. I feel that some of you, it might have been, you know, um, a character or a goal or something that you wanted to manifest, but out of a version of yourself that is not ultimately uh, what your soul wants. It could have been a version of yourself uh, that wanted to prove something to your parents, to a certain parent, to a, an ex. You know, it's like there's with pride, there's certain things that maybe you wanted to prove, but more out of a part of yourself that got sad, you know? Maybe there was a rejection. So there was this desire. So it's very interesting here. Some of you, if that's the case, drop me a butterfly because of those wings. Drop in the comments a butterfly. I'll know what that means. 
if you feel that that resonates. So Chiron reading plus I'm going to post plus frequency. Um, yeah, definitely can help you there. So that's that's the first part of your message here as far as your healing. There's a lot of spiritual awakening. There's a lot of shedding as this transit starts. There's, you know, we're in Scorpio season. This new moon in Scorpio is also all about unbecoming. We're shedding parts of ourselves that were unloving, you know. And here I feel that like there might have been an experience, a specific experience, event that created a lot of sadness that made you create maybe this goal, this vision, um, this character to hide or to uh, embody a certain version of yourself, then now you're ready to let go. Or even out of protection. You know, I'm going to share this with you because I really felt like, like that kind of like resonated uh, with something, you know, close to my uh, experience where I was a very introverted child. I was very dreamy. I was all about music, uh, being with animals, drawing. I didn't really need a lot of people around me or, you know, I was always content with my own energy. Um, but then when I started to want to connect with others, because I was always moving and I was new to new schools pretty much every year. I had eight schools out of 12 years of schools, you know, the usual school program, um, because of the moves, it was really hard because I felt like I didn't really know how to behave or how to interact. And it made me at some point, like really embody an expression and a version of myself that was extroverted, but that was really pushing me outside of my comfort zone. And I learned a lot from it, but you know, through spiritual awakening, I had to remember the very uh, deepest uh, part of myself that was more introverted and how I had this whole creative process. So some of you, there might be some type of event like this that created a version that was, um, you know, out of character. And it doesn't mean something negative. It's probably something that you needed to learn. Okay. Because uh, now people don't believe me when I say I was shy. Um, so there might have been something here along those lines. That's why I'm sharing a little bit of that story with you, because you might have had to embody a different expression of yourself, but now it's coming to an end or it's coming to a place where you're able to see the beauty also of what this persona and character taught you, but also being able to let it go let it be alchemized, be in integrated. So that doesn't mean you need to be one or the other. You can be both and integrate both um, wisdom from both sides. Yeah. All right. Let's see what those cards here with the wisdom of the Oracle. Interesting. A lot of wisdom coming through for you. That's a lot of cards here. So we're going to shuffle again. But it seems that just with all that fell through, you've learned a lot through this process, pile number two. And it's beautiful, but there's an invitation to have awareness of this and maybe shed a certain layer. So let's see what we have. I don't know why, but I feel called to put them on top of them, of each other. This may be a, a wisdom for each. Okay, so let's see what we have. Mending. What did I tell you? <laughs> okay. You're integrating. You don't have to, you know, say goodbye fully to that version of yourself. It's something that taught you. It could have been also um, parts of your shadow, parts of an ego that you believe you were. Maybe also, you know, a character or a beauty that you felt you had to embody, and now you're able to merge both of those aspects. Maybe some of you, it was uh, towards yin yang because of that energy of mending, okay? Or maybe a part of you that felt that you were 
you know, being this way or that way was wrong, you know, oh, being introverted is not right or being extroverted is not, you know, in, in case of that story. So being able to be comfortable with both aspects of yourself and integrate them. But I feel that, you know, there's, there's a, through this process pile number two, there's your dream, your higher embodiment that's going to come through in greater ways. We have, yes, <laughs> we have another mask. Oh my God. There's like the, the golden mask. So that means like there's, there's like a version of yourself that, that is more authentic that is coming forward. A more authentic, sorry, I don't know how to put this, but it feels like a cascade of messages here. So I'm keeping it this way, even though you can't see all of the cards. I feel that there's a part also of your instincts and part of your, you know, inst animal instincts and your higher self that are merging together. So there's definitely here a higher dynamic and communication between the lower self and the higher self that is coming forward through this transit for you, my dear pile number two. Let's see in terms of alchemy, where we have never ending stories. Some of you maybe this pattern, this ego, this character, or not allowing yourself to integrate both aspects of yourself kept you in the loop of attracting a lot of the similar uh, dynamics that created the sadness in the first place. Maybe a rejection, maybe a feeling of loneliness, not being accepted, not being seen, not being seen for who you truly are. Okay, so you're also ending and alchemizing. So through this alchemy, through this reunion, through this mending of both aspects of yourself, you're getting to a higher truth of your expression, of your essence. And this ends a karmic cycle of repetition of what created this in the first place. Oh my God. And it leads you back home. No place like home. Home. I love this. Wow. Some of you, maybe it is very much connected to uh, introverted, extroverted. I don't know because of the home. Some of you may be being comfortable with how you're comfortable with being introverted or whatever's your nature. Okay. I feel like there's something here, but again, it's a general reading. So you're going to interpret it uh, as you wish. There's gold that is shining through in the house. Now, the home is the heart. So there's a lot of heart-centered, a heart healing that is occurring for you here at this time, pile number two. Okay, so I love this first phase of those readings and messages. Let's move on to now that you understand how you're going to alchemize, integrate different aspects of yourself and going to get back into your home space, your heart space. What can you expect? What are those next messages? Woo! The fates. Wow, you are aligning with the stars. You are aligning with your fate, with your destiny, with your weird, W-Y-R-D. Okay? I love this. I love this. Number 17 also is uh, in tarot, the star card, okay? This is Aquarius energy, maybe enter entering this, you know, phase of Pluto entering Aquarius, leaving behind, uh, you know, the 20 years of ex expressing and ex experiencing Capricorn archetype. Um, Aquarius is all about the way shower, you're going to be able to embody an expression and version of yourself that I feel, you know, look at this. She's, she doesn't have eyes. She doesn't need sight. She's following her bliss. Follow your bliss is what I'm hearing is that's your next layer and level when this embodiment occurs. This is something I share with pile number one, and I feel called to share it with you. At this time, we're doing a lot of shedding of uh, who we thought we were, 
a lot of this process is due to a Scorpio season and the new moon in Scorpio about the process of unbecoming. Some of you, I feel that maybe there's a message in the Scorpio messages. I'm going to put Scorpio, um, pick a card so you can look at this. Um, but I also suggested to pile number one uh, to join me and for you, my dear pile number two, in the Instagram subscription, you have 14 days as a free trial where you can access some journal prompts to heal the five languages of love. It felt just so full and wholesome to do this process. And um, I'm looking forward for the ones that will share their feedback on those type of, uh, you know, journaling prompts, because writing can be so healing. You know, it helps you connect some dots between events, between the stars. Okay, let's see what else you have. Ooh, imagine, oh my God. Pile number two, you're just going to enter a phase where your visualization, your imagination is going to be super strong thanks to this integration, this alchemy process. Yeah, that's what I have for you, my dear pile number two. Please give it a thumbs up if it supported you. It supports the channel to grow. I'm sending you many cosmic blessings your way. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your Kundalini healing messages. Wow, so far it's been amazing. I've been loving this. Pile number three. Ooh, a lot of three for you. Okay, that's going to be a sign, okay, for this specific message that's going to synchronize with your reality, the repetition of the number three. This is all about joy, pleasure, and play. Being able to experience this through all the channels of your body. If you chose according to your zodiac signs, we have here the devil card for Capricorn, we have the Hierophant card for Taurus. We have the Hermit card for Virgo. And we have the Lover's card for Gemini. Okay, I would strongly suggest your natal Mars placement. This is a Mars in Leo transit. Pick a card reading. It's inspired by what this transit and what the planet Mars is teaching us. If you watch the beginning of this reading, I was explaining about... Uh, Mars and the tarot card associated to Mars, which is the tower. You have this lightning, you have this upgrade, you have this destruction of a structure, but also a new pathway. So I feel that there's something about a new pathway for you. So let's first get those healing messages for you to access this new pathway of expressing and experiencing life with more joy, pleasure, and fun. What does pile number three needs to know? Okay, three again. <laughs> I can't with you, pile number three. <sighs> okay. Gosh, I love doing this. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <sighs> Maybe there's something about tapping and practicing more of things that really you enjoy. Okay, pile number three, but let's see. We have pay attention to signs. I cannot with you because we were talking about synchronicities. This is, you're, you are in a phase where your life seems to synchronize, synchronize. And I don't know why, but my finger being on that cave, <laughs> that aspect here, um, it reminds me of the messages of the past self with Mercury and Sagittarius. This is going to be listed in the video description. There might be another message. This is why I pay attention to the signs, but I'm, I'm hearing also zodiac signs. Okay, if you haven't chosen this pile according to your zodiac placement for Mars, definitely do that as well, okay? Because there's something about astrology, a certain transit for you, Okay, the number 10, you know, is, is an expression of an ending and beginning of a new cycle. There's something that you're, you're totally shifting in your reality here, part number three. Okay, then we have the inner child. Okay, beautiful. I like that it's in that column. And then courage. 
I feel as some of you, again, you, did you like notice of how I, like I express how much I love doing those readings and it kind of like came out of me, like without any filter. I feel that there's something about you stopping to filter or censor any parts of yourself. There's a craft, a habit, a, a, a certain thing that is that is meant to bring you prosperity. And why I say prosperity? Because all of a sudden I notice all those little frogs. Okay. And I almost was called to pick up an, an animal tarot deck that add the frog as a prosperity. But then I felt like it was just something I had to notice, but that was not part of the reading. So it was for this, because I had to link the animal cards messages with this, this card. And I feel it's something that is very much connected to your own energy pile number three, putting little things together, just like a, a game. Some of you may like puzzles or you may like, you know, detective games or understanding things or paying attention to signs, understanding numerology, astrology, okay? It's saying, follow this, follow this courage. Now, because of the, this actually is not a cave, there's a door. <laughs> I don't know why I saw a cave and it's actually some type of thumb. Do you say thumb? It's a cemetery, okay? But when I... Oh, wow. I had never seen this little creep here. I don't know if it shows very well, but you see it? Little creepy eyes. And then you have this little shadow self here that is all about fear, okay? I do want to mention for you pile number three, and I will list it in the description of that video, the pharmacy playlist because I have fears and insecurities that are part of this. But if you have any, even anxiety as a child, if you have any of those symptoms, okay, I have some great frequency healing with really deep sound engineering knowledge that is crafted and weaved into those frequencies that can help you. Okay. Especially in terms of courage, I have one that's about fears and insecurities. Maybe there's something that you're insecure about towards something that you love doing and practicing, but maybe a part of you feels like it's only game and play and it cannot bring you stability or bring you an income. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Let's see what the message is. So Kundalini healing messages here. There was... You know what? When I shuffle the card, I feel that you're keenly aware, pile number three, or have this belief that you have missed out on certain opportunities where maybe you could have launched yourself towards doing this or that, that you really love and really enjoy, and maybe you didn't do it at the time. And I want to share with you, like, if you feel like you missed out on something, you didn't. Okay, you did not. You probably had to some deeper healing or deeper awareness or maybe learning something else in between, okay, uh, this moment that was needed for this craft, for this healing to happen. Now, we have the time to go. So there might be also part of this, okay, Remember how I say you might have felt that you missed on the some opportunities? Some of you, maybe you're still locked in a nine to five and it's time for you to take that leap of faith into uh, what you know is right for yourself. But some of you that might be also connected to a fear and insecurity from your childhood, okay? I suggested to pile number one and pile number two uh, on Instagram, I have an Instagram subscription and you have access to a 14 day trial. So for free, um, where I shared some journaling prompts to heal the five love languages. It's been so activating and so healing for myself and for some others that shared it with me. Uh, and I trust that could be something here that could help you. You'll find also in the video description box, some, a link to 
uh, this type of knowledge, but also a quiz. So you can learn more about your own love languages and the one that you um, have as a favorite. Again, I like to be proficient in all five, but <laughs> we have all <laughs> we have our favorite ones, and um, I think it's important to know all five of them because then you're able to receive and give love to others in um, greater ways. Here and now, and it failed this. This is this is happening here and now. You need to be present with this, my dear pile number um, three here. This is happening here and now. This and look at this. The door is opening. <gasps> oh my lord! Yeah, you know we're having also. I don't know why I'm feeling the eleven eleven portal here. There's something that you're healing that is around love, that is around something you love and you crave, okay? And that portal, 1111, could be that gateway. So you're, you're, you're definitely being invited to um, deep dive in this work. Let's see. Okay. All right. So we have the not for you. There are certain things that you know you have to let go of that could be your job that could be an opportunity that could be your belief the not for you also reminds me also of um you know god's rejection is god's protection type of energy maybe it was a relationship you know especially with the checkmates here or the checkboard and the white and the black which is you know yin yang energy this is the frequency I suggested to listen to for doing the journaling prompt. So def definitely where there's something around love and your beliefs around love and the love maybe that you deserve or the love that you crave that um, we need to heal here so you can access this gateway, okay? Oh, wow, I love this. Then you're going to attract more of your tribe. When you have the courage to observe, to observe yourself, it could be also observing the cycles of the moon. We have a, um, let me see this one. This is actually a last crescent moon. So towards the end, I'm going to give you a date here. You're, you're really deep. In, you, you might not realize it, pile number three, but I feel like you're highly, highly connected to the cycles of the universe. You're naturally someone that feels cycles. And maybe that's why you feel a little bit uh, some sadness or frustration or whatever feeling towards maybe some missed opportunity. But it's, it's not. You were right at those times, not to take those doors and opportunities because there was something and it's still there, okay? We still have to figure that out, uh, that we need to let go. But I give you what you need to address is your five love languages. Okay. Um, what did I say? Yeah, I forgot. Let me I don't know what was that all about. I literally had like... A blank. Hmm. Let me see this. Temptation. Okay. This is interesting because I feel that maybe you have certain offers, pile number three, that could be tempting. Okay. But that are not for you. It could be relationship, but it's almost like it made me forget who I was, what I was doing, what mattered to me. So pay attention to this. You might have had that. You might not be there anymore, but you might be needing to clear this out of your nervous system with the dragon energy, okay? Some of you, if you have access to the um, YouTube membership, all levels, work with the removing X's and hexes. Removing X's frequency, definitely. Okay, what I wanted to tell you, because now it came back, okay, and once you clear that, okay. Um, November 22nd, we have the last quarter. 
So between November 22nd and uh, the next phase of the moon is going to be December 1st. Between that week, okay, there's there's something here that you're, you're finally either discovering or that, that door is opening, okay? That door is opening. I told you it's coming for the 1111 portal, but because there is this first gateway and then there's a time to go where you have to get there, okay? This is, this is a progress that you're uh, processing through the new moon in Scorpio cycle, definitely here. Yeah, I would strongly suggest also the, the reading for this. I'm going to post it uh, in the description box below. So new moon, okay, Scorpio, perfect. All right, Whew. pile number three, that feels like a lot to process, but such great opportunities because you're going to find your tribe. You're finding your tribe. You're letting go of those past attraction, okay? I'm going to get to the next layer of those messages for you. Once you're removing this uh, pattern of entanglement, what can you expect, okay, with that door? That do door that is flying <laughs> towards you. Ooh, look at this, flexible, okay? You, I think, oh, wow. Okay, it's not for everyone, but some of you, if you've been trying to get out of the nine to five, because it seemed that it was there, something that was constricted, constrictive of your creativity, of your playfulness, of your fun, you might be manifesting something that gives you flexible hours, flexible to your schedule, to also your own. Remember, you're very connected to the rhythm of the universe. I saw this and I mentioned it to you. So it will give you the wings and the freedom and the space for you to have the hours that are flexible to your own personal circadian rhythm, your own personal one, okay? Something that helps you, you know, um, flow with your own bliss. Oh, I love this. I love this. This is where you're going. Flexibility so you can enjoy more fun. And also a space where you have more uh, freedom to regenerate. Maybe some of you, you were burnt out. Regenerate. I'm feeling also more youthfulness with this energy. This is something I shared with uh, pile number one. If you have access to the YouTube membership, uh, the nervous system uh, power nap. Wow. And then you can co-create something even greater. Yeah. You're going to be, um, part number three, this phase, like you Kundalini wants to free yourself from all that we've mentioned. So you can have the space to co-create with the universe, something that is flexible, that invites more space for playfulness, for pleasure, for feeling youthful with this regeneration. Some of you, you may have felt burnt out from extra hours or something that was unnatural to your own personal preferences or rhythm. So that's what I have for you, pile number three. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. And please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste.